Bronco Mendenhall, head coach, with us as well. So let's get to the guys that, that you've gone for. Maybe some immediate help okay. when you go to JUCO. So let's start with Josh Carter, 6'5", 290-pound offensive lineman from Eastern Arizona College. He hails from Mountain View High School. What do you like about Josh Carter? I like Josh a lot. Um, originally committed to Arizona out of high school, went on his mission, came back, two-year starter at Eastern Arizona College. Gives us immediate help at offensive tackle. Uh, again, a really... Uh, active and mobile player for being as big as he is. Passionate about coming to BYU but can cover the field, meaning running downfield, knocking safeties down, knocking linebackers down with good enough feet um, still to protect the passer. And so a lot of upside. Edward Fusi, 6'1", 285, offensive lineman from Mount San Antonio Community College, originally out of Corona, California. Again, going to fill an immediate need. Exactly right. Center is what uh, um, Fusi is. Just I, I, I call him by his last name. I'm going with that. Recently come back, came back from his mission. Um, recently married uh, in the Redlands Temple. Um, but plays so, so hard. Covers sideline to sideline. Good enough feet to go downfield. Um, and I love linemen that are active. And so he's lean um, at 315 pounds when you see him. He's solid, um, but carries the weight well and is so mobile that I really liked him. Lean may not be the word to describe <laughs> DeAndre Wesley, 6'6", 310 from Diablo Valley Community College. He hails from Pleasant Hill, California. How about this big guy? Yeah, heavily recruited not only by Arizona State, but the University of Utah. Loved his feet, and we need immediate t uh, depth and help at tackle and if you just watch the way he runs that was hash mark to hash mark F hash mark to hash mark effortless effortlessly um, bends well at the knees not at the waist and again is a really nice uh, size to protect the front side of our quarterback um, and allow us to have the protection we're gonna need you mentioned you lost six kids on that offensive line to injury last season so here comes another one to help out Tim Duran 6 4 290 from Cabrillo College, another Washington State prospect. Yeah, and so in this particular case, he's played center, guard, and tackle. So when you're looking, he basically gives us the equivalent at three different spots to get depth. Is probably the most mature of our offensive line signees at 23 years old. It really values his chance to play the game, and he plays it like that. Um, he, he's thankful for every snap that he gets and is a fun, fun, fun guy to be around. Kalolu Utu, 6'2 defensive lineman from Compton Community College, grew up in Samoa, and uh, he'll have a lot of folks watching BYU TV over in the islands. Really quick, really fast, 300 pounds, also punted, um, really mobile, and so his goal is to actually go to the NFL as a punter. He's a former rugby player, and so when he punts it, he's running and kicking it, and so he has good ball skills, but he's quick and fast and tough, and if you watch him just on the film here, super, super active. Sam Lee, six-foot defensive back from the College of the Canyons. His home is in Brandywine, Maryland. So you go to the south and get Sam. And Sam is uh, really a nice uh, football player in terms of contact and in terms of footwork, similar to Preston Hadley, who we just lost. And that's the biggest compliment I could pay a defensive back because I love Preston. Um, and no one, I think, is more excited to be part of this signing class than Sam as a junior college player. And and we, we really need him. He fits a great need, but it's going to be fun to coach him because he wants to be here so bad. I'm looking forward to seeing this kid as well. Trenton Trammell, six-foot yes. defensive back, City College of San Francisco. His home's in Oakland. More importantly, he runs a 4-5 in the 40. He's, he's already making an impact on our team. He's here mid-year training with our program. Maybe has the best feet of anyone already on our team. He's a hard worker and he loves football. He's staying out extra right now, working on his coverage. Um, but when you start thinking about the possibility of he and Jordan Johnson and Sam Lee maybe all being together out there, all of a sudden the depth at our coverage spots just, uh, just really improved. One of the best junior colleges in the country. He was heavily recruited, but really liked what we had to offer in terms of lifestyle here. So here come the junior college transfers looking to make an immediate impact. Do you expect to see all those guys doing something against Virginia? Well, when you consider junior college players, it's for that reason. And so now it's up to them, but they're being brought in with the opportunity to do that. And that's likely that you could see that. And we have to practice those names. Yeah. All right. Next group of Cougars signed in 2010, then played that year, redshirted, or went straight out on their church missions. And the good thing about missionaries that go out, they come back. And let's take a look at a couple of them. The running backs here with Algernon Brown and A.J. Moore. Brown from Magna, Utah. Moore from Marietta, California. Algie fullback type. A.J. running back type. Could also put him in the slot and he catches it well. Put them together and you have a good backfield.
Tight end Brian Sampson from Pleasant Grove, Utah. Offensive lineman Jordan Black from Draper, Utah. Brian, head coach's son, loves football. We like him possibly as a defensive player as well. Haven't told him that yet. <laughs> um, Jordan Black, huge offensive lineman, tough. Nasty, hardworking, and he'll help us on the front. Defensive lineman uh, Sae Tawatu, apologize to everyone related to him, <laughs> from Alpine, Utah, and Tuni Kennedy from South Jordan. Also, the Deseret News 2009 Mr. Football from Bingham High School. Sae Tawatu left as, well, played quarterback in high school, played outside linebacker for us. We'll come back as a defensive lineman as he keeps getting bigger and bigger. Tuni, uh, nose tackle, hopefully, hopefully replacing uh, Romney Funga. All right, a couple of linebackers here. I'm just going to let you tell me what Ho-Ching's first name is from Sandy, Utah. I, I, go, I go with I.E. Let's go with that. And Joey Owens from Pleasant Grove. <laughs> Both um, really good football players. I.E. inside linebacker for us. Joey will be training at outside linebacker. Both return from their missions and good additions to our program. Another look at the return missionaries. Cody Hoffman, uh, again, was in here a couple of weeks ago, and, and he said he was so happy to see some guys back from his missions. He goes, they go out, boys. <laughs> they come back, man. And this, this from Cody Hoffman. A different background than, than, than the, the Mormon missionaries that come through and, and noticing how happy it is to see them come back with their glow. Cody is uh, really smart, very intelligent, but also loves our program. And uh, he recognizes the value of these kids when they go out. And he understands the value at BYU and has really become one of our most fierce proponents. While we're on the missionary topic, the, the change where kids can go out at 18, of the, of the kids we announced today who have signed, how many will actually stay and go out and how you juggling all Yeah, that? really unique because this year there are even additional kids we weren't able to talk about that are part of this class. But because we can't sign more now than a specific number, a new rule this year, they're actually having to contact the media on their own. They've signed letters of commitment that they're coming. So there are, there are at least two handfuls full of others that are part of this class that will be coming back in 15 and maybe just a couple of these kids that are going first. You got so much going for you. You have a monster schedule. On national TV, you're fine-tuning your staff a little bit. The defense may be better than last year from what, if you listen to some of the guys. So as you approach spring drills here in a few weeks, what's number one on your list to get done? Um, culture development, uh, unifying our team, making sure there's one standard for every player on our football team. And to be a BYU football player first is more important than being on offense or defense. So making sure a clear work ethic is, is established and migrates throughout the entire thing, then making sure that Coach and I has all the right practice structure and time necessary, not only for his staff, but for that side of the ball to get caught up as quickly as possible um, to give us our best chance for the season. Be your ninth season. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, now, years past, you say, I don't like to think about the opener till like a couple weeks. Now that you're in veteran status, heading to number nine, will you think about Virginia at all in the next little bit? I've paid attention to Virginia just to know that they hired Steve Fairchild, the former coach at Colorado State, and that'll probably influence what we do this spring. Um, so I'll acknowledge the opener, not much so after So it's that. officially on. It's on. All right, Coach, thank you. Thanks. Congratulations on your recruiting class.